This is going to be a short video where we dive into the new HTMX 1.9 release and we have a new attribute in that release, it's called HXON. We're going to see some examples of how to use that in this video. Now this page here has the release notes for HTMX 1.9.0 and in this release we have support for view transitions on Google Chrome and also support for what's called naked HX trigger attributes. But we're going to look at the third one here and that's support for generalized inline event handling with the new HXON attribute. So let's go to the page for this new HX on attribute. We have this page here. I'll link this below the video. And this allows you to embed scripts in line to respond to events that happen on the page. And this is similar to the on event properties you can find in native HTML, but it improves on that by enabling the handling of any event for enhanced locality of behavior. And that's a core philosophy to the HTMX community, locality of behavior. And you can see how to use this attribute in the code examples here. We have a div tag with the HX on attribute and the string that we get for that attribute has an event name and then the action that's performed for that event. And in this case, we're simply alerting out a message to the browser. So we're going to see how to do this in the context of a Django application, but this can be applied to any project that uses front end code and uses HTMX. So let's get started. We're going to go to VS Code and I've got a Django project set up here and we're loading HTMX from a CDN here within the head tag. Now within this setup, we have this base template that contains all the boilerplate HTML and we have an index.html template that extends the base template. And within there, we have a content block that just at the moment displays the message, hello. We can go to that page on our browser and you can see what that looks like here. What we're gonna do is just show some features of this new HX on attribute. So let's get rid of this text. And to start with, we're gonna define a div tag with the ID of root. I'm gonna give it some style with a font size of 40 pixels. And within that div, actually we'll bring back the hello message and we can close that tag off and let's go back to the page and we can see how that looks now we have the div tag at the top left and the font size has been increased to 40 pixels so what we're going to do now is add our hx on attribute to see how that works so let's go to the tag and we can add hx on and we set that equal to a string now here we define an event that we want to respond to with this attribute and the event we're going to use is the click event and when that occurs let's just alert something to the browser and we're just going to alert the message hello from app here and we're going to go back to the page and let's see if this works if we refresh this page and we click the hello text here you can see we get the alert message appearing on the browser so that's how it works you simply have an event and you're responding to that event with some code and the code is defined within the HX on attribute and it's defined after the event name and after the colon and we can respond to any event in the DOM for example we could respond to the mouse over event and we can change the alert action that occurs when that event happens to a window.confirm with the question do you like HTMX so let's see how that works now if we just mouse over this we see that the alert appears or rather the confirm message appears and we have a question here do you like HTMX and we can select OK or cancel. Nothing's going to happen either way. We're just showing the different options that you can apply here. So let's now move on to something a bit more practical. What we're going to do is firstly, we're going to go back to base.html and underneath HTMX, we're going to add bootstrap CSS as an import here. So I'm going to go to the documentation and I'll pop the link for this in the description. We're going to copy the CSS code and we're going to paste that into the head tag here and that'll bring Bootstrap's styles into our application. Now let's get to some HTMX content. We're gonna go back to the index.html and I'm gonna remove these attributes here from the div and we're actually gonna replace this hello with some other code here. I'm gonna define a button and that's gonna send a get request to our Django backend. So we specify the HX get attribute and then we can use Django's URL template tag and we have a URL with the name of index in this application. You can see that within the URL patterns here, it has the name index. So we're gonna reference that as the URL that we're gonna send the get request to. And I'm gonna just close that button just now and we're gonna say fetch with HTMX. That's the text within the button itself. And then we can close that tag. Below that, we're gonna define another div and this is gonna have an ID of user table and we can close that off just below. Now the idea is we want to show a table of different users in our application. We're just gonna, at the moment, show a message saying no users yet. And we can put a sad face there as well. Now actually, before we go on here, I've set this to index, but I actually want to create a new URL pattern here. So I'm gonna copy that path and we're gonna define a new path here and it's gonna have a string of content and it's gonna call a new view that we're gonna define in a second called HTMX underscore content. 
Now the naming conventions here are not great, but we're just doing this for demonstrative purposes. And we can give this URL a name of htmx-content, and we're gonna copy that, save the URL patterns, and then go back to our template. And we're gonna use that URL here within the button when we send the get request to Django. So now we're gonna send a get request to this particular view here. So let's copy the name of that view, and we'll go back to views.py, and define a Django function-based view here that takes the request as a parameter. And within this view, we're simply gonna return the render function, and we pass the request to that, and we're also gonna create a template here called partials slash user table.html. And that doesn't exist at the moment, so we're gonna save the views.py file, and within the templates directory, we can create that partials folder, and then we can copy the name of this template here and create that within that folder. And in here, we're gonna define the HTML that we want to return from that Django view, and HTMX is then gonna swap that into the DOM. So what do we want to put in this template? I'm just gonna get some dummy code from Bootstrap CSS here, and it's gonna be this table here. I'll leave a link to this below the video. We're gonna copy the code for this table, and this table defines a set of users, and it's got a first name, a last name, and also a handle, so that's the columns for this table. We're just gonna paste this in here, and our Django view, which is this view here, is going to return this table of HTML content to the front end, and then HTMX is gonna swap that somehow into the DOM. So that's the next step. What we want to do is swap that returned HTML into this div tag here with the ID of user table. So what we're gonna do is define an HX target on that button, and we're gonna set that equal to the user table ID, and that tells HTMX where to apply the returned HTML, where to swap it into the DOM. So this is a simple setup for what we're doing. We have a button, and when we click that button, it's gonna fetch the content from the endpoint in Django, and it's gonna swap that table into the DOM underneath that button. So let's see if this works. If we go back to our page here, when we refresh this page, we have the button. When we click that button, the message below, which says no users, is replaced with the table of content from Bootstrap. Now let's say that when we click this button, we want to alert a message when the response is received. Later on, we're gonna see how to actually do something useful and print out how many users are in this table just below and using the HX on attribute to do that. But first of all, let's go back to the code. We're just gonna alert something to the browser whenever the response is received. We can do that on this button element using some HTMX native events. So let's do a new line on this button. And again, we're gonna use the HX on attribute and we're gonna specify a string here. And the event that we're listening for here is gonna be HTMX after request. And if you want to know about this event and all the other events that are provided by HTMX, there's a page in the documentation. I'll link this below the video. And the HTMX after request event, that's triggered after an AJAX request has finished. And that's applied either in the case of successful request or also in the case of a failure. So in our code here, we're listening for the after request event. And when we get that, we want to alert that a response has been received to the DOM. So let's see if that works now. And we're gonna go back to our page, refresh the page. When we click the button, you see that we get the alert message before the content is swapped into the DOM. When we hit OK here, you see that the content appears in the DOM. So now we have this alert coming up in between the response coming in and also the content being swapped into the DOM. And we can use another event in HTMX if we want to do something after the content is actually present in the DOM. So we're gonna go back to our template here and I'm gonna copy this HX on attribute and we're gonna bring it down to the target, which is the div with the ID of user table. And we're gonna change this event here from the after request event to the after settle event. And the after settle event, that is different from after request. This is firing after the content from the response has been swapped into the DOM and that content is then present in the DOM. That's when we can listen for this event and we can alert that the content is in the DOM. So I'm just gonna put a new message in here. Content is in the DOM. If we save this template, we can go back to our page here. When we click the button, we get the response received message after the request. We can hit OK, the content is then swapped into the DOM, and we get the content is in the DOM message from the after settle event. So that's two different events that you can hook into, and you can do that using native JavaScript, but also now you can also use the HX on attribute. Now I'm gonna show two more things in this video. Firstly, we can call a function that's defined elsewhere in our JavaScript code. We're gonna see that next. And finally, after that, we're gonna see how we can use a custom event that we're triggering from our Django backend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the HX on attribute from from the button that sends the actual get request. And I'm also gonna change what's executed on the after settle event. And I'm actually gonna call a custom function that's called output message. 
and we'll call that function and we can end the tag here. So let's go over this. We have an hxon attribute and on the after settle event, we're going to call a custom function called output message. Now what we're going to write is a function that will look at the DOM after the settle event and it's going to calculate how many users are in this table and display a message below the table using that custom function. So let's get started writing that function. If we go underneath the div here, we can write a script tag and I'm going to define that custom function called output message. So let's write that function now. It's called output message. And what we're going to do is calculate the number of rows in that table. So let's start by calculating the number of table rows. We'll create a variable called trs and it's going to be equal to document.querySelectorAll. And we pass a CSS selector expression to this. So we're going to look at the table body here and we're going to get all the table rows that are children of that table body. The second thing I'm going to do is get a reference to this root element and we're going to append a child to that root element after we calculate the number of rows in the table. So let's call that root. And in this case, we're going to use the document.getElementById function. And the ID we pass to that is the ID of root. So we have here all the table rows in the table. We're going to calculate the length of that and create a message and add it to a paragraph tag in the DOM. So let's create a paragraph tag by using a JavaScript expression here. We create a variable called p and we're going to use the document.createElement function here. And the element that we're actually creating is a paragraph tag. So we can just put p in there. Underneath that, we're going to create a text node that's going to contain the actual text for that paragraph. So we'll call the variable text and that's going to be equal to document.create text node. And this is another function and we pass a string to that. I'm going to use a JavaScript template string here and the text that we want to put in the paragraph tag. Firstly, we're going to reference our TRs and we're going to use the length property on that to get the number of table rows in the data. And after we get the number, we can just say something like users were discovered. So for example, if there are three rows in the table, it's going to say three users were discovered. And now we just need to add our new elements to the DOM. So to the paragraph tag, we can use the append child function and we can append our text node containing that message. And then the final thing to do in this function is we're going to actually add the paragraph tag to our existing document, which we have up here. We're going to reference our root node here and we're going to append a child to that. And that child is the paragraph tag itself. So underneath this content, we're going to have a new child appearing here. And that's going to be this new paragraph that contains the number of users in the table. So let's save this file. And what we have here just to go over it is an output message function. And we're calling that from our hx on attribute on the after settle event. So let's save everything and go back to the page and refresh this page. When we hit the button, we fetch the content and nothing is happening here. So I'm not sure what's going on. Let's go to the console here. And we have a message here that, and it's a reference error and I've misspelled document somewhere in this code. So let's go back to the code. And I think it's on line 22 here. We've misspelled document. So I'm going to change that to what it should be. Sorry about that. And we'll go back to the page. When we hit the button, we get the table and you can see underneath that we have our message saying three users were discovered. And we can see that without the developer tools as well. When we hit the button, it's going to the back end. Django's returning this table and HTMX is swapping that into the DOM. After the swap, the after settle event is fired and then that function is called that outputs the message telling us how many users are in the page. And the function is called through this new attribute, the HX on attribute. So this is very useful. It allows you to respond to events that occur and it allows you to do so in line and that also preserves that philosophy of locality of behavior. So let's now see how we can use custom events in HTMX and use them within the HX on attribute. We're going to go back to views.py and I'm going to change this statement and create a response variable that is set to the return statement of the render function. And I'm going to add a header to that response. This is an HTTP header. It's called HX trigger and that allows us to trigger an event on the client side. So what I'm going to call the event in this case, I'm just going to call it custom event. You can call that anything you want. Want. Once we've added that header to the response, we can just return that response. And this is going to return an HX trigger header as part of the response content. And the header value is going to be custom event. Once we've done that, we can save the views.py file and go back to our index.html template. And I'm actually going to remove the code here in the user table. And we're going to add the HX on attribute to this button above. So let's add that attribute and we're going to listen for our custom event and that has a name of custom event. So this is the event that's being returned from our Django backend. 
we want to perform an action when we receive that event. So let's say that when we get back this custom event, we want to make the background color of the page green. That's what we want to do when we receive this event. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a reference to the document.body element. And to that, we can change the style. And in our case, we access the style attribute and we're gonna access the background and set that equal to green here. So we get back the custom event and we're changing the style of the entire body tag and making the background color green. So let's save this file and we're gonna go back to the page and we can see if this works when we hit the button you can see we still get back the table but now we have this green background color now, I'm not sure that this color is the best but I'll leave that up to you if you want to put that in your applications let's go back to the template we're going to show something else now and we're just going to hammer home the point here that you can put any JavaScript code you want within these HX on attributes to respond to events what I'm going to do here is paste in a new selector expression we're going to get the button that we click on the page it's this one here to fetch the content and what we're going to do to that button is we're going to change its style and put the font size of the text within the button to 40 pixels. So that's going to change the appearance of this button when we click it and we fetch the response. So let's refresh the page. When we click the button, you can see the text within that button on the response on our custom event is increased to 40 pixels here. Now again, this is maybe a bit questionable from the perspective of user experience. You might not want to be increasing a button this much in your actual applications, but we're just demonstrating how to do this using the HX on attribute. Let's finish with an example of how to transform this element. So we're going to remove the style of the font size and we're going to reference the transform style and we're going to set that equal to rotate and we're going to rotate that 45 degrees. We need to also put this in a string here so that we can read that properly. And actually, we also need to make sure that this is an equal sign. This isn't a CSS file. It's a JavaScript expression. So we're setting the transform attribute equal to the rotation of 45 degrees. Let's now save this file and go back to the page. We can refresh the page. And when we click the button, you can see that it's rotated 45 degrees. And this is the final thing we're going to do in the page. We're just going to leave it like that. And hopefully you won't be deploying this kind of thing to production. But that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.